Hello, this is Beth Fonnell. Uh, welcome to our virtual presentation for the ECIS Leadership Conference. Today is April 14th, 2020. I'm the Vice President for Administrative Searches and, Administrative and Governance Services at ISS. And hi, I'm Dana Watts, and I'm the Director of Research and Development at ISS. Um, today, we're going to be looking at um, just a few things um, from our diversity collaborative results and survey. Um, we're going to first start off with why diversity matters, then talk about a summary of the diversity collaborative uh, survey process, the responses and some highlights. We're gonna look at some definitions and frameworks, and then specifically at some school recommendations, and then some recommendations for the region and across the globe, and how to get involved. Why diversity matters. Let me give you a little background. The, the Diversity Collaborative started in February 2017 at an AAIE conference in New York. Since then, the momentum has been growing rapidly. There is a lot of interest in the work that the Collaborative is doing, and we believe that the leadership in international schools should reflect the diversity in the student body. Diverse groups make better decisions than homogenous ones because they benefit from, and you can see, perspectives, problem-solving heuristics, interpretations, predictive models, and decision rules. Oh. Sorry, we went ahead there in the presentation. So that brings us to what is your why? Um, people come to different um, workshops on diversity for a multitude of different reasons. Some people are champions of diversity and trying to add and increase diversity and empower diverse leaders within our schools. Others are far more skeptic. Why do we need diversity? What, is the, what are the benefits of diversity? Additionally, sometimes people con are concerned about the perceptions. What are the perceptions of diversity? What, does our, what, is, what do our stakeholders, especially our students, parents, and larger communities, think about diversity within leadership within our schools? And what is the reality of what it really is? We're here to explore that today. In the spring of 2019, three groups initiated a research study to survey international school leadership and diversity. Our goal was to survey accredited international schools in order to establish a baseline of information specific to the international school sector regarding perceptions of school leadership and diversity specifically. And within this, um, it was the diversity collaborative and the collaborative efforts also of ISC Research and George Mason University. The study was distributed to approximately 2,676 accredited international schools. Uh, Richard Gladskull um, sent it out for us for I through ISC research, and we had quite a good response. The return rates for the survey were representative of the regional distribution of international schools. You'll note the high percentage of the schools in Asia, which is due to the generally high proportion of schools in this region. According to the ISC research, group of the current 11,693 international schools around the world, 6,695 are located in Asia. The majority of our surveying respondents identified as head of school or as principal. However, there was a slight limitation of the study. Um, principals and principal heads were um, there was a little bit of confusion. So if you notice in the top category where we have 73.9%, we have head of school, director, and principal, which accounts for the smaller numbers in some of the others of head of middle school, head of elementary, head of seniors, etc. Responses reflect the current demographics of international school leadership. And here we have from the diversity collaborative survey leadership and the results are by gender, including principals. And to the right, we have age from 2018 to 2019, the results by gender, but not including principals. So the head of school and principal categories are conflated in the DC survey, in the diversity collaborative survey. 
The age data is specific to heads of school and principal level positions are not included. At first glance, research from the Diversity Collaborative from the spring of 2019 suggests that women make up 42% of leadership positions overall in international schools. This seems very encouraging until you look specifically at head of school numbers. The Diversity Collaborative data included principals within their data. When we overlap this data with H, we see that only 33% of those school leaders are women, whereas 67% are men. At the end of the day, women are in the pipeline, but struggling to move into headship positions. We are passionate about creating more diverse, equitable and inclusive and just educational communities across the globe. But what does DEIJ mean? Well, it depends. Um, leadership should reflect the diver diverse populations we serve. And there are common definitions of, of um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. However, it, sometimes it depends on the context that we're in. Diversity is the presence of difference. Equity in ensuring everyone has what they need to fully participate. Inclusion means embracing differences. Justice relates to systems, policies, and practices that ensure DEI. Now we're going to turn to the eight key findings from the report. The first one was definitions of diversity, equity, and inclusion vary, as well as recognition of the value of these attributes within our international schools. And whatever their definition, international schools are more likely to be focused on students demonstrating these attributes than on our faculty and leadership reflecting and modeling these same attributes. It was found that awareness of the importance and positive contribution of having a diverse leadership team is not always clear or valued. Intentionality followed by action implementation across time makes a difference in the development of a diverse leadership team. International intentionality matters. Diversity does not occur by chance. Recruiting and hiring for a diverse leadership team, as well as creating pathways within a school, is not always easy, but such objectives are definitely doable. And processes such as policies, accreditation, and strategic planning, followed by reflection and evaluation, support these efforts. There were demonstrative differences in self-efficacy and power. Our perceived capacity to enact change versus our perception of the opportunity to actually do so. Strong models of diversity, equity, and inclusion exist among the international schools that responded. School leaders have enormous power in schools. Those who prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion were able to make a difference regardless of their contexts. The implications of the study. Um, in reviewing and analyzing the survey findings, we looked at quite a few different um, frameworks and diversity frameworks to help inspire us. The international, the intercultural development continuum. The IDC framework reflects the general types of responses received in the diversity collaborative research. We start with denial a general rejection of the idea that people from different backgrounds, cultures, histories, experiences, etc., are fundamentally different. Polarization, recognition of difference and, and belief that those in the minority have a responsibility to conform to the norms of the majority. Minimization, recognition of these fundamental differences, but downplaying the significance of those differences. Acceptance, understand, acknowledge, and embrace difference. Adaptation, seek out and work at high levels of efficacy with others from different backgrounds. From there, we, and based on the survey data, 
the research, and the literature, we developed the Integrated Organizational Framework. This was created to help international schools and organizations that serve international schools become more intercultural, equitable, and just. By diagnosing the challenges they face and moving forward, given their specific context. So we'll go through each one of these step by step and show you ways that schools can move forward. We begin with resistance. Identify the sources of, re of resistance and learn from schools in similar contexts. Often international schools initially face resistance from some stakeholders to focusing on DEIJ issues and or deliberately developing a diverse leadership. It's a, a diverse leadership team. It's important to understand the source of that resistance and to learn from other schools in similar contexts that have become more intercultural. The next stage on the continuum is commitment. To articulate a, com a commitment to DEIJ and um, once they've overcome resistance, I'm sorry, and inter international school stakeholders articulated a commitment to DEIJ and interculturalism that reflects their current and unique context. The next is strategic focus. Establish specific goals and long-term plans. At this stage, international schools establish specific goals and long-term plans to ensure that their commitment to interculturalism and DEIJ practices become embedded in the school and school leadership. And this brings us to persistence. Responding to inevitable changes, challenges. Even with the best laid plans, international schools inevitably hit barriers and challenges doing DEIJ intercultural work. How a school stakeholders respond to those challenges determines whether a school's DEIJ intercultural commitment persists through the inevitable leadership, curricular, and other, through inevitable leadership, curricular, and other transitions that happen within our schools. And finally, we get to sustainability and leadership. Leverage commitment and serve as role models, mentors and leaders. Schools with sustained commitments to DDIJ into cultural issues leverage that commitment to attract students and educators, and they serve as role models, mentors and leaders for the international school community. This now brings us to the next part. So we're going to first go through our school level, level recommendations, and then we'll look at regional and um, uh, regional recommendations for our schools around the globe. To address resistance, you can encourage key school constituents to attend local or regional trainings on diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice. You can connect with schools or other organizations in your city or region whose efforts in this area you admire to learn from their journeys. You can articulate consistently why having a diverse leadership team is important for your school. Make this part of the inst institutional narrative. To establish commitment, you want to evaluate your leadership pipeline to understand the experience of different groups of educators at your school. You also can host courageous conversations about diversity, equity, and, and inclusion amongst all your school stakeholders. And third, adapt and articulate definitions for diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice that make sense within your context. Next, to develop a strategic focus, include a focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice in your strategic plan and or reaccreditation self-study. Establish priorities and goals around your DDIJ efforts. And actively recruit, promote diverse teachers, teacher leaders, and leadership team members. To ensure persistence, celebrate your successes and expect and learn from your colleagues, from your challenges and setbacks. Use a tool and associated training like the IDI to deepen your commitment and track your progress toward interculturalism. 
and share your journey through conference presentations and workshops. And finally, to achieve sustainability and leadership, use your DEIJ reputation to promote your school and recruit diverse educators. Help to lead the DGIJ efforts in your region and globally. And finally, develop a case study or write a journal article about your DEIJ efforts to assist other schools. And this brings us to our regional and global recommendations. Develop international school definitions of diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice that are not US or Eurocentric because the issues in international schools are substantially different than in local US European schools. Trying to transfer diversity from the US, North America, or generally Western perspective around the world is likely to be unsuccessful. Through global organizations, continue to gather data from international schools and associations to better inform the international school community about existing inequities and track progress over time. Include sessions about diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice at international school conferences and in association-sponsored professional development programs for aspiring, new, and experienced school leaders and board members. Next, work with international school search firms and other consultants to educate boards and search committees about the value of diversity of diverse leadership teams and to connect to the growing networks of diverse international school educators. Accreditation is to reinforce the value of diversity and encourage schools to DEIJ goals in their school improvement plans. Identify a critical friends group in each region with experience in DEIJ work. Create a series of traveling workshops for schools who are beginning this adventure. And be sure to represent the broad definitions of diversity. And lastly, create case studies. Identify a range of schools and create case studies. How did they create more diverse leadership teams? How have they sustained it over time? And what advice do they have for others? And to maintain momentum, share and promote all the work above through international school conference workshops, publications, and social media. In what ways does your faculty and school leadership team reflect the ideals of diversity, equity, and inclusion? And what do you see as the most challenging aspects of promoting diversity among your faculty and school leadership teams? These are all questions that we can have with our faculties in our, or within our small, smaller leadership team. After hearing our research today and engaging in this dialogue, what is one action plan you could take back to promote these findings in your own school? And what kinds of professional development opportunities would you need in order to support movement towards a more DEIJ teaching and learning environment? So think about what's important, what are notable observations, statements, or questions to share out. And next steps is we're looking for feedback. What additional data are you looking for? Within the Diversity Collaborative, we're continuing to develop surveys and look at programs and systems and structures we can put in place to help the region. So please reach out to us and let us know how we can best serve you. Thank you so much for listening and learning about our Diversity Collaborative data collection and findings. And we encourage you to join our team. For the full report, you can see where you can get it and you can email us at infodiversitycollaborative at iss.edu. Thank you very much and we appreciate your time.